How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at 10,000 Black Feathers written by Jeff Lemire with art by Andrea Sorrentino and this is part of the Bone Orchard Mythos. Quick introduction to what that is. It's kind of a new thing but to be honest it's one of my most anticipated uh, projects in horror comics. Um, the Bone Orchard Mythos, basically you get the creative team from Gideon Falls, which was a really great horror comic, and they decided to put together a new series, but in a different way. Individual stories. Basically, they created a universe with mythology behind it, and all these stories take place in the same universe, with shared mythology and a lot of times shared tone and art style so they all feel like they very much go together but each one focuses very strongly on telling its own unique story and not getting bogged down by all the lore dump so you get a consistent tone for these stories and if you pay attention you're rewarded with piecing together clues and figuring out a little bit more as to what's going on and you can really start to formulate your own theories but all that stuff is bonus stuff they really are focusing primarily on telling interesting individual stories and and I really do love it uh, the last one in the series was called The Passageway and that's different than this book 10,000 Black Feathers but really does feel like the same world and I, I really do love it. And this story as well is very, very interesting. Uh, you get kind of a story in four parts. You see you have the present. And in the present, this woman is a writer. And she's going back to her hometown as part of a publicity tour for her book. Now, in the present, she's getting terrorized by strange and mysterious visions a hint at a dark surreal underworld with absolutely great great imagery there but the thing is she's trying to figure out what happened to her friend because when she was younger she had a best friend that disappeared and nobody knows what happened to her so a bit of a almost like a true crime style feeling there although not purely true crime because we do get into surrealism but we also get flashbacks to the past her and her best friend we know she's on track to be a writer her and her best friend are making up a fantasy story and we get chunks of that fantasy story as well so present with dark surreal horror past with a fun fantasy story these girls are telling but the past, it's done in like brighter, happier artwork that will get grungier over time as we get closer and closer to that fateful day, the last day anyone ever saw my friend alive. And I also do like, I feel this is very Silent Hill. If you guys are Silent Hill fans, you'll definitely like Bone Orchard Mythos because Silent Hill, they would have a story and all the monsters in Silent Hill would in some way kind of psychologically reflect that sort of hidden true story behind it. You know, the monsters were real, but there was always a sort of thing, you know, what did this character really go through? And I feel that this is one that you read through it and you get the base level of the story, but I feel like with more reads and, you know, closer inspection of the details, quite quickly we realize that there is a uh, kind of a true story behind this something else that really went on and so just you know the nature with the setup of the bone orchard mythos plus the to story st telling structure it really does gear itself for rereads gear itself for analyzing clues and gear itself for over analysis really and I really did like this book it very very puzzly and then of course the farther we go on the more we get of Andrea Sorrentino's great dark creepy and surreal artwork lots of really cool stuff going on here 
definitely, definitely did like it. I guess if we want to take a further look at the story, let's go ahead and switch to the close-up camera. I'll show you guys a little bit of the story, a little bit of the art, but I'll be avoiding major spoilers. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and switch to the close-up camera. All right. Here we are inside the castle taking a closer look at 10,000 black feathers. And I guess right at the bat, look at the cover first. A really nice kind of minimal cover where we get one of the feathers with a skull face in it. And these are basically what were used as the A covers throughout the book. And these are preserved inside the the book as issue breaks so you can actually tell when one issue begins and the next uh, where one issue ends and the next starts and we can see the sort of you know the hand holding the dagger with the face inside they all keep that pretty unified theme so that's pretty cool uh, the spine bone orchard mythos 10,000 black feathers and flip it to the back we get the nice creepy creatures uh, rated M for mature 1999 US which is a pretty fair price for a hardcover this actually collects five issues so yeah a hardcover that's five issues long that's a pretty fair price and horror fantasy is the genre which yes that's that's exactly what this is and I do like the presentation opening up with red and then we get sort of a TV static going into the world of the story which I really do like and then the credit page we get Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino uh, but it actually with this image here a double page splash with the two kids sitting in this mysterious world does actually translate pretty well into the first page of the comic where we see the two of them talking uh, anyway I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the story in more detail. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I want to show you guys a little bit of the art and a little bit of the plot. And actually, a lot of this is going to come from issue one because it does a great job of setup. But we see the two girls sitting there with each other as young kids and her voice in the white boxes and a mysterious stranger kind of taunting her in the black boxes. We see the feathers fly up, and we get sort of the horrifying later truth with the other girl not looking so well, and the main character there is going to be crying. Well, what led us to this circumstance? What What's going on here? Well, she wakes up from the dream, and it turns out she's grown up she's a successful author and she's going back to her hometown she figured she'd make that one of the stops on her book tour and she's going to kind of think about the horrific past that she's had you know she's going up to this house to to get a place to stay and it turns out it's an old woman, but we don't know exactly who she is just yet. And I do love this lighthouse beer, a bit of a reference to the passageway. And we do get a shot of a basement door handle and her afraid to go down into it. But what exactly happened in that basement? You know, uh, what what is its significance? So a lot of it we don't know. What I really do like, though, we get a, a very spooky hint with a vision of the girl floating above the street with all the black feathers around her saying, you need to help me. And then, for real, we're not very far into the book, and she gets a vision of this guy. Oh, man, that that's creepy. So, with a horrifying vision, with returning to her house, she decides to try to solve the mystery of where her missing and disappeared old friend went to. So a little bit of a, a sort of true crime feel. Now that being said, the book is definitely supernatural, and if you're expecting 100% true crime, you're might not going to get it. But I really do like the contrasting art styles between the horrible present and the uh, the nice past and we see her there reading a book and her friend comes up and starts to talk to her 
about books. They they hadn't known each other yet, but they'll bond quite quickly over this. And there is a fun reference to Stephen King's The Dark Tower, which the Bone Orchard mythos definitely, definitely reminds me of. But they go to her house and we see, oh, hey, that old woman was her friend's mother. So apparently they still have a good relationship, even though the daughter has disappeared. And we see why she was afraid to go into the basement. That's where they hung out as kids all the time in the parents' basement. And we get to see that uh, she had been writing her own fantasy and shares it with her new friend. And they decide to finish the story together. So it's going to be about creating the story and it's going to be an excuse to have a fantasy world which does lead to one aspect of the story I really do like and that is the fantasy versions of themselves when they're telling the story we get a peek into what this world looks like and how they're chasing someone and oh my gosh the monsters in this world are terrifying but the person that they're chasing uh, is a bad guy made entirely out of crows, you know, uh, Corvin, I think they call it, and he's, uh, yeah, a bird-themed bad guy, and note how the fictitious version of the bad guy that's just in their story, well, when they're being haunted, there's feathers everywhere, so you kind of wonder how fictitious it is, uh, but I won't go too much farther, but needless to say, they grow up and their relationship is strained as they take two different paths and it's all going to be building towards the last night I saw her alive and I really like this sort of subtlety in the artwork where we can see that the friend is drawn in this much more new style this grungy harder uh, you know sort of darker style that we see a lot of the future in but we see her as she you know is more innocent is drawn more in this old style and we get a lot of scenes where she just kind of looks out of place because she's drawn in a different art style but that's pretty cool but we know from the future segment that somehow the girl goes missing and yeah it's a whole bunch of tension and setup we know it's a story about crumbling childhood relationships that's already uh, pretty sad, but knowing that it is going to be some bitter end and then wondering if her in the future can do anything about it, overall, a lot that I really like here and I definitely would recommend it. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Jeff Lemire playlist where you can see my review for The Passageway. And also, I've covered a couple volumes of Gideon Falls in there. So if you want to see me talk about more Jeff Lemire stuff, you can click right here. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.